Electricity is a vital part of the modern world. It is, quite literally, the essential spark that drives our technological society. It is therefore equally vital that its production, and the means that this production is accomplished, be well understood. There are a few ways that electrical power is produced. The primary method is via kinetic energy induction, the process of rotating magnetic fields inside an appropriately wound conducting body to induce a current in that body. Examples of this type include both coal and nuclear power plants, hydroelectric dams, and wind turbines. Less common means of production include the photovoltaic effect used in solar energy production and the harnessing of Earth's natural heat output in geothermal energy production. By far, the most common means of electrical production consists of what is named a heat engine, the harnessing of a heat source to create steam, which then rotates a turbine as it condenses to create the rotation necessary to induce an electrical current. Related to this are methods which use simple kinetic energy to create this same type of rotation. The current world favored energy source for electrical production is the combustion of coal. This choice has certain advantages, namely the relative stability of coal and its ease of transport in its natural state, thus eliminating the need for any significant processing infrastructure. Coal's natural abundance in the United States and China, for example, give it popularity as mining is also relatively inexpensive. The chief problem inherent with coal is the fact that its combustion produces around 40 billion metric tons each year of carbon dioxide, an alleged greenhouse gas as well as a significant amount of various sulfur oxides, which are known agents responsible for acid rain. Improvements in coal processing have significantly reduced the sulfur content, but the problem does still remain. Also, facilities for removing carbon dioxide from a coal plant's waste gases are extremely energy hungry, potentially consuming up to 70% of the plant's electric output to capture 90% of its CO2. A relatively new player in large-scale energy production is wind power. Wind turbines produce power by harnessing the work done by the wind and using this flow of air to rotate a generator and thereby generate electricity. The principal advantage of this means of production is that there is no carbon dioxide or other pollutants produced in the actual production of energy. Admittedly, the manufacturing and installation processes do offset this benefit somewhat, but in a long-term picture there is essentially no pollution caused by these turbines. The primary disadvantage of wind turbines is the somewhat unpredictable nature of their power output. Essentially, on days when there is no wind, these turbines produce no power. Combined with the difficulty of storing electrical power long term, since batteries discharge over time, this presents a major hurdle for this type of power production. Also, since each individual turbine's power output is fairly low, large numbers of these turbines are required to create useful levels of power. Hydroelectric power consists of harnessing the natural kinetic energy of a body of water, for example, a river, and using it to create electricity generating rotation of a turbine. The key advantage of this is that, once constructed, there is no need for fuel and thus virtually no carbon dioxide output, not to mention the economic benefits. Also, labor costs are virtually non-existent, since essentially no staff is needed to run the plant once constructed. Hydroelectric power's disadvantages are primarily ecological. The effects on local marine life can be devastating, with several instances of extinction having occurred in the past due to dam construction. Also, since power production is entirely dependent on river flow, if a particularly dry season occurs, it is possible for the dam to dramatically underproduce, leading to power shortages over large areas. In the past decades, nuclear power has risen to the global stage as a safe, clean way to produce power. As population and demand increase, so does generation capacity. Climate change concerns have prompted the push for cleaner power facilities that can generate a steady supply of power in an environmentally friendly, safe manner. Coal mining often leaves grasslands and surrounding animal habitats in complete ruin due to the polluting nature of exploration and recovery. Since nuclear power plants can use one one-thousandth the fuel to produce the same amount of energy as a coal plant, mining is done on a much smaller scale that leaves more nature as it was found. One factor that is of principal concern to many opponents is the capital cost involved in building nuclear facilities. In the past, this has totaled in the billions of dollars, and plants have taken multiple years to come to completion. 
However, as technology develops, Generation 4 plants promise shorter building timelines, streamlined module construction, decreased costs, and safer designs that employ simplistic system features to capitalize on safety. In addition, once constructed and online, a 2500 megawatt electric facility can make up to $1 million per day in generation profits. As a direct comparison, this chart shows the time necessary for a representative example of each of the aforementioned power sources to match the production of a 2500 megawatt nuclear power plant. Please note the rate of coal consumption inherent in this power level, and consider the fact that a single train car carries around 100 tons of coal. Thus, this power level requires about 70 cars of coal daily. Also, note that this level of production requires 150 wind turbines operating at their nominal power rating for almost 17 days, and that it is extremely unlikely that they will be operating at this power level that entire time. When analyzing greenhouse gas emissions, baseload power supply, and employment opportunities for this nation, nothing compares to nuclear.